Welcome to the BNI Blast on Blab. If you're listening to this on the replay, retweet, retweet and share this with your followers and fellow BNI members and networking colleagues. The way I like to start off these um, broadcasts, besides a little sample music that I just I decided to do there, is uh, do a little definition of what is BNI. B- BNI is an acronym for Business Networking International. It's uh, BNI is the largest business networking organization in the world. With over 180,000 members, last year alone, BNI generated, well, this is probably two years ago now. I need to update the statistics. They generated over 6 million referrals, resulting in $8.6 billion of worth of business to BNI members. Uh, BNI offers members opportunity to share ideas, contacts, and most importantly, business referrals. Um, I'd like to introduce my co-host for this session, Stephanie Montenegro. Hello. Yeah. And um, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do with us, Stephanie? Of course. My name is Stephanie Montenegro, and I'm the associate producer for this show. Um, And I'm excited to be here. I'm not part of BNI, but I'll get my way in there soon. (laughs) My name is Brian Lobig. I'm, um, I'm a web design, internet marketing strategist, I like to call myself. Um, I'm based out of Bethesda, Maryland, Kensington, Maryland, to be specific, just northwest of uh, Washington, D.C. And um, I'm a member of a BNI chapter in Bethesda called the uh, um, Capital Business Alliance. Capital because we're so close to Washington, Mm D.C. And um, my normal uh, co-host, Philip Day, is is out of town taking care of some... uh, personal business, actually a little bit of a tragedy. So to keep him and his family in your uh, thoughts or or prayers. Um, I'm really happy to introduce our special guest today, um, James Bonato of James Bonato Video, LLC, uh, based out of Germantown, Maryland. He's also a member of uh, BNI. He offers just a little bio about who James is. Um, He offers full length film or um, highlight film to really live the motion of the day's events. James James works with those looking to create videos of a personal nature, such as memorial films, love stories, documentaries, weddings, corporate sports events, those kind of things. Um, James, why don't you fill in, fill in the gaps from that little brief introduction and also tell us something personal about yourself. Uh, well, you did a very, very good job, Brian. Thank but I, I, as you may know, I'm very apprehensive about this video because uh, doing this interview because I can't pull the uh, uncouth shenanigans that I usually pull at the GNI meetings. I'm like, I mean, I guess the Spock years are, you know, they just wouldn't be appropriate for this interview. And I think <laughs> it, uh, the funny nose and glasses, that would be inappropriate as well. So we'll, we won't be using that. <laughs> but you did a very, very good introduction uh, of me. Um, uh, I, I, I assume that you're going to ask me about BNI. Yeah, well, you want to tell us something a little personal about yourself that uh, maybe some maybe people watching, people who even know you might not might not know some a little insight into uh, James Bonato, the person. Uh, well, uh, I am married uh, for 28 years now. We just celebrated our 28th uh, wedding anniversary uh, to a woman who ridiculously decided to marry me. I don't know. I tricked her. I tricked her. It was a big trick. Um, we don't have any kids and we have no pets. Those are her rules, not mine. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I'd, I'd probably have about five or six cats, but that <laughs> just isn't in the cards. So she lets me. Go ahead. How, how Go ahead. long have you, uh, so with videography, how long have you been in that business? Well, I've been in it for 27 years now, um, since 1989. Uh, in 1988, the year before I professionally became a videographer, uh, I made a film uh, with a friend of mine, and we shot it on VHS, and we wrote it, and it was just the most awful thing that you ever want to see. If uh, Siskel and Ebert uh, were to get a hold of it, they definitely would have given it a thumbs down. Um, but but we went ahead and did that, and I, I suppose I'll expand on that a little later well tell us a little bit about it now what was the uh, focus of that one? Uh, oh god you don't want to know <laughs> but what the interesting part of that was that's where i cut my teeth on video so to speak um uh we ended up shooting tons and tons of video cassette tapes we had about 13 vhs tapes and i didn't know how to edit and i had to do it cheap so i found this place in bethesda a do-it-yourself uh, video production place, 
And I rented it for three days straight because I knew it was going to take me forever to, to make this film. So I did it Monday, nine to five, Tuesday, nine to five and Wednesday, nine to five. So mm -hmm. I showed up 9 a.m. sharp on Monday morning. And the owner of the place is very nice. He, he sits with you the first hour and he mm -hmm. explains what each button means and what function goes with it and all the different little knobs that they have. And it's in this glass soundproof booth. And so he sat with me for the first hour, then he leaves. Then um, I'm the rest of the day there. And what I had seemed to thought was just a few hours later, he taps on the window and goes, five minutes, James. <gasps> and I was like, I was really angry at him because I said, you know, why didn't he tell me he was going to close up shop for lunch? You know, do I have to pay for this hour? I mean, why can't I eat a sandwich here? You know, he, I, I shouldn't, I, I should, that's going to fall me, you know, I'm going to fall behind another hour, an hour because he's closing for lunch. And then I looked at my watch and it was not lunchtime. It was five o'clock. So I was there the whole day. I thought it was lunchtime. And it was at that moment that I knew for what I was going to do for the rest of my life I was going to be a video editor. Wow. <clears throat> so yeah. time, time just flew by. You didn't even. Amazing. That's, that's Amazing. a good sign that you're, you're doing, you're, you're living, you're kind of into your passion, right? Absolutely. That's to, to, to tell the truth. Fantastic. Right. Um, so that's really your start into videography. So that, cause kind of like video editing was the thing. So do you, do you get as much joy out of the editing as you do of actually shooting the video? When I'm in front of the edit suite, and I am now, this is how I usually work right there. Uh, all's right with the world when I'm in, in, in sitting in front of the, uh, the video editor. Now, <laughs> a long time ago, when I first got into videography, which when it was when I was about 13, and of mm -hmm. course, it wasn't videography back then. It was film, and it was Super 8 film, and I had a Super 8 camera, oh, and yeah. I, would, I would make my little silly, ridiculous films. Uh, back when I was 13. And the way we edited back then was to actually take a razor blade and cut the film wow. and then stick the film to get, uh, together with tape, with scotch tape. That's how you edited back in 1974. Wow, fantastic. And now, now in 2015, I mean, it's graduated from film to video to digital video. And now we don't even shoot on, on video at all. We shoot on memory cards. <laughs> yeah. That's the way it is. I mean, I'm 55 now. And back when I was 13, it was quite, so how many years is that? Let's do them at 55 minus 13. Let me do the math there. Let's I'm gonna carry the one, a square root of pi. But that was, that was, that was three years ago, wasn't it? Yeah. It, was, it was about 40 years ago. So editing has changed, but uh, you just roll with the punches. Amazing. Yeah. Tell us a little about, so one of the things we wanted to talk about tonight was the, the film that you are, your documentary film that you've, just finished producing where are you is it is it in fo total final form and tell us a little bit about how you got into that project it most certainly is brian as a matter of fact it will be premiering uh on march 13th at uh 7 p.m at the uh b i'm sorry the afi silver theaters in silver spring it is absolutely free if you are interested uh, contact me at james at jamesbonadovideo.com. It is invite only, and I would love to get an invite for, uh, from you to uh, see the film. It's it's on a Sunday night uh, from seven, at 7 o'clock. Now, I'm sorry, you said you wanted to know about the making of the film. Is that what you asked? Yeah, how did, just, what, yeah what, is the, what is the whole uh, premise of the film, and how did you make it? Tell, tell us again, but before you do that, tell us again the, um, the location. Where is it going to be premiering at? AFI Theaters in Silver Spring, and I will be sending out an evite, a group evite to everyone with the address and the parking instructions and uh, and everything. But it's downtown Silver Spring. Okay, well, I'm, I'm putting that in the kind of in the chat on the side, so it's kind of we have a little history of the time and location of the video. So t tell us a little bit about the video itself. Like, what is what is the um, what's the storyline? What is what motivated the um, production? What motivated the production was to inspire people to reach their goals in life and find out who we all are in life. Hmm. Um, I myself am inspired by these three characters. The name of the film is Three Cameos. Hmm. And what I do is I find I follow three people around with a camera for about a year 
and they are three very different people, different personalities in different cultures. And they have three big mountains to climb in their life, like an obstacle. They have a big obstacle in their life, a little bit more immense and mammoth than maybe the three of us might have. Mm -hmm. We all have obstacles. And they, all three of them, want to achieve a very noble goal in their lives. All three obstacles are very different. All three um, goals are very different. Yet I tie them in together in this film universally to make the audience, which would be us, root for them and hmm. probably identify with at least one, if not all three. Hmm. Um, so that was my motivation. It was um, very much, I, I kind of sneak in the film a little bit with some narration. Um, hmm. Anytime you're making a, a, the the rules for a good film or a good television program or for a good book or for a good play is show, don't tell. Mm -hmm. And I tried very hard to follow that rule. So I want to show, I, I don't want to tell. I do a little bit of telling in my narration. I try and stay away from it. I think at the end, I, I do a little bit, but I, I follow that. So that was my motivation. Did you did you have the idea for the film before you met the people who are in it, or did you meet one of the people who then inspired the making of the film? No, I knew none of them before, hmm. uh, and I'll tell you how I, I met them all. Um, the it's quite frankly, it started out as a screenplay <laughs> for a friend of mine, and I. I I had written this screenplay, which took me about six months to do. And I was so proud of it. I took me, I, I was so, I'm, oh my gosh, it's finished. And I sent it to this friend who is a very, very good writer. And uh, I sat on it for a couple of days. And he finally called me, he goes, James, I read your script. It's the worst piece of garbage that I've ever read. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's, it's terrible. It's, it's just, you broke every rule of writing that there is, and you need a lot of work. And so he actually stuck with me and tried to, to work with me. But after I think about version number seven, I said, I said you know what? I'm not a writer. Hmm. I'm not a writer. Uh, the story was about uh, somebody fighting pancreatic cancer. Hmm. Um, so I said, well, if I'm not going to be able to write it, why, I'm very good behind the camera. So why don't, why don't I make a documentary film of this? And it'll be three people. It just but won't be one. I mean, the, 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 the screenplay was called Cameo because I was following one person. Oh, yeah. The documentary film is three cameos because I'm following three people. And I wanted – well <laughs> – Making a documentary film means that I didn't write it. The three people tell their own story, so that's how I'm off the hook. I, I, I didn't write it. I'm behind the camera, so uh, I kind of got around it that way. But you had asked me what what was what got me started with the film. It was that script of one person with cancer. So if I can go through the the three cameos rather briefly, sure. Um, the first the first cameo, of course, is someone with cancer. Okay. And I found. Uh, a, a woman with cancer, and I found a, a. Believe me, the three people that I ended up with are not the three people that I started with. Hmm. Getting the balance was uh, took two years to do. Wow. But um, I had I had started with a woman with a shade of ovarian cancer, and we started to film, and she passed away from that cancer. Wow. So we didn't get very far. So then I went. Uh, I found uh, there were a number of, of organizations on the inter internet that I found a lot of of my people from, and cancer being one of them. I found a beautiful, just wonderful English woman who was so elegant, and anything that she spoke out of her mouth was just like poetry. Uh, just this English accent was just incredible, and she wanted to be in the film. And we did some test shooting with her, and. <sighs> There just wasn't the meat in her story that I wanted. I, it, her her goal was was a very nice goal, but it just wasn't fitting into what I wanted in my three cameo uh, documentary film. So I moved on from that and went to another one. I finally ran into Ava, who uh, uh, had a cancer, 
and she's the one that I stuck with. And I won't tell you her story. I'll, you'll have to, you'll have to see the film to find out her story. <laughs> that was the first Thanks. one. The sec, the sec, the second cameo. Uh, I definitely wanted to have um, an African American, a young African American, because I know in Southeast DC there is a number of people who have wonderful stories struggling to 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 find themselves. And I thought that would be a really, really good second cameo. And that one was really hard. I mean, I found I tried a lot of different organizations in Southeast and I got hung up on so many times. And you know, don't call us, we'll call you. And you can't do that. Let me tell you why it's not going to work. Your film will never work because of this, this, and this. But I kept at it. And quite <laughs> quite frankly, a good uh look. When I was in high school, I used to get rejected all the time asking lady girls out to, to for a date. Oh, so that you have plenty that of is, experience. <laughs> that is nothing compared to the rejection that I got in making this film of people who didn't want to be in it or or thought my idea was ridiculous. But um, I did find someone from the southeast. He was a boxer, and I did some wonderful footage with him. And uh, oh, is that your parakeet? That is my phone <laughs> talking for some reason. I'm not sure why. That was a bit okay. odd. I'm sorry. All right. That's all right. So uh, I was filming this boxer, and uh, all of a sudden, he just decided not to return any of my phone calls. He didn't uh, answer my texts or my emails. He just dropped out. So <laughs> that was that. And then I found another young African-American who really, really had a tough mountain to climb. And I had surmised that he was not going to get over that to reach his goal. I, I was rooting for him, but there was no way. As a matter of fact, with all of the people who, I mean, really, there were about eight people that I, together, that try and make the final three. Mm -hmm. And all of them, it was a risk for all of them. I mean, I didn't know if they were going to achieve their goal. So that was a risk of following them around for a year, thinking that they're going to make their goal. And he, I just knew, wasn't going to, to go very far. So I ended up with a, a fine young man who is from Baltimore, from the uh, underprivileged areas of, of the Baltimore um, suburbs. And he has a marvelous story. So he was number two. And the final one, real quick, I wanted the third cameo to be something that his obstacle was something very visual that you could see. Mm -hmm. I try to do uh, people with vitiligo, oh, yeah. um, but that community just did not respond at all to me. And there was one person that I started out with that didn't work out, but I ended up going with an amputee because mm -hmm. I met somebody from uh, an, a prosthetic place who was very interested in what I'm doing. And he gave me Harry, uh, who is missing a leg, and Harry is, is, was the third cameo. Oh, yeah. So it was, very, it was very much like building a house of cards. <laughs> um, you know how you take a deck of 52 cards and you're, you're building the, the thing and then one wrong placement of that card mm -hmm. and the whole house of cards fall down. Yeah. And I had remembered early on, it was about three months in, I had three house of cards going, three characters. And within two weeks, all three of them fell down to the ground. And I was beside mm -hmm. myself. After three months, I had nothing. I didn't have an inch of film. Uh, that was going to be long in my, my film. I, I was at the, I was at ground zero and I just fought and I just kept going and going, going when it, when it, and it finally uh, built up all three. So when that did you your, go ahead? Sorry, that was your own mountain then, huh? <laughs> exactly. Very well put Stephanie. Yes. <laughs> so when, what year did you actually start kind of start this whole process to where it's come to today in 2016? 2014. It so me, two years. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, like the first three months I, I was working with other people who just didn't make it in the film. And then finally the last card got put on there uh, in October of last year Fantastic. and I completed it. Yeah. What are your, Vince, what are your yeah. go ahead. Vince go ahead. had a question. Um, if you had a favorite of the three. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Let's ask that again. Oh, sorry. Uh, Vince had a question about if you had a favorite of the three cameos, if one of them was your favorite. Vince is asking that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, I, I uh, can do, but won't. I'm not going to favor any of the three. That's the <laughs> only. Uh, the funny thing was is that I, I've taken it to a few people, and uh, 
it's funny if you bring the film to, to six different people, uh, they'll give you six different answers of what you did right and what you did wrong. But uh, I hesitate to, to to tell you which one it is. It's like choosing favorite. a favorite child, right? It's like <laughs> exactly. you, can't, you can't tell you can't tell the oldest one that you know he's the favorite. I know if I did, if I did, it would be oh, I can't believe I just let that slip out. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> I'm not gonna exactly. I'm not gonna answer you, Vince. Sorry. So what are your plans for uh, promoting the film? What do you hope to account? What do you hope to do with the film now that it's you know kind of coming to fruition? Marketing the film is going to be even harder than making the film and making the film was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> um, but marketing is going to be, first of all, marketing is hard anyway, but it's going to be doubly hard for me. And I'll tell you why the people in my BNI group know me. I've been around for a little over a year mm -hmm. and they know that marketing is not my strength. <laughs> okay. When I sit and have breakfast with you all, Mm -hmm. And I'm looking around the room with the other at the other 30 people in the room at BNI on Wednesday mornings. I get the impression that they all just wake up and their minds are going, how can I make my business better? What do I have to do today? What, what networking do I need to do? How can I make this work even better? How can I market stronger? How can I streamline things? When I wake mm -hmm. up in the morning, that's Tanny. That's Tani Chowdhury. <laughs> oh, uh, Tani Chowdhury, absolutely. I, 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 before she dreams of it. Yeah. <laughs> right, but, exactly. um, but when I wake in the, up in the morning, I'm not thinking of that. I'm thinking of how I can change the world, how I can save it, what what can I do to better it, how can I uh, – uh, the last thing uh, – th that's what I think about in the morning, and it carries on into the afternoon and into the evening. And marketing <laughs> never hits unless it's right here in my face. So marketing the film is going to be really, really tough for me. Um, well, that's why I'm asking. Well, ahead. this show, this show is like step one for marketing your film. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and the film being shown at at the theater. By the way, it's March thirteenth at seven <laughs> o'clock at really? AFI Silver Theaters. Um, that's only one spoke in the wheel. There are okay. other ways to marketing. The other ones are, uh, I want to go from high school to high school to high school and promote it that way. Um, I, in Montgomery County, I'm doing that also in Baltimore because that's where Malik is from. Oh, yeah. I also want to do halfway houses and maybe some juvie halls or rehabilitation centers because although adults could be very well moved by this film and be inspired, I really want to go after the young crowd because – they're more open mm -hmm. and I feel I have a better shot at, at, at going for them. So that's why I'm, I'm hitting all the high schools. What I may have to do is go around the country to all these um, documentary film festivals, oh, yeah. which I don't exactly want to do, but that's what I will do if that's what it comes to do. Mm -hmm. it comes to. Uh, I also mailed uh, it to uh, PBS who probably gets about 50 documentary films a day in the mail. But uh, I said, my, look, if, if it's going to be shown, if I'm going to get my film on PBS, I have to at least try, right? Exactly. <laughs> you know, it's, I'm, you know uh, I'm not holding my breath, but that's another spoke in the wheel. And uh, Daphne says Canada too, question mark. <laughs> oh, uh, she said. <laughs> Canada. Okay. Right, right, right. Yeah, I can take it to Canada. <laughs> Let's Very see. Good. Let's talk a little bit about BNI. So we we talked. You kind of mentioned, kind of weaved BNI through your discussion there. You've been in, involved with BNI for about a year. You said a little over a year. Was that your first involvement with Business Networking International? Was the chapter you're in right now? Absolutely. What happened? How I got into BNI is I I backed. One, nine, oh, that's interesting. I'll play that song. That's so neat. Um, <laughs> okay, that's uh, going off. I backed in the BNI, quite frankly. I was on the phone with someone who – he wasn't BNI either, and we were just talking, and he said, oh, I'm going to this networking thing tomorrow morning. Uh, uh, they market things, and I said, well, that sounds interesting. Can I tag along? And he said, well, I, I don't know. I think you need to be asked. The guy who asked me, his name is Brian Lobig, so why don't you call him? So I, I called you, and you foolishly invited me, and uh, you can't I take it back now. About Martin, that. I really blew it. Um, so uh, I came through 
the first B and I, I walked in and I didn't know what the heck was going on. So I sat down and I, it might have been um, the president at the time, Jim Dunn, who said, mm -hmm. well, it's giver's gain is our theory, which wow. I love. That is very close and near and dear <laughs> to my heart is to, in order to get, receive – you have to give, and that is second nature to me. So that was the first thing I liked about BNI. The second thing is is that I love the structure of the BNI meetings because, as you know, I'm a very detail oriented person. That's one of my, you know, and and also as people stood up around the room, I was very impressed with the with the members. I mean, it was a, a group of really very very um. A group of incredible people, with the exception of Neil Kaplan, of course, but that goes without saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's watching now too. <laughs> yes, yes, but so so I decided to stay, and and you guys are stuck stuck with me for a little while. But that's how I ba I backed into BNI. I really I didn't know what was going on at that first huh, day. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So this is that was similar to my experience. This was the first BNI group I ever attended, and I was sold this the day I walked into that group, like the, the structure, the, the people who were in there were, you know, leaders in their industry. I feel like everyone in there, including you are really leaders and um, experts in what they do for a living. Uh, well, I'm a very humble man who happens to be a genius. <laughs> uh, I'm giving you my aim. I'm giving you my A material, Stephanie. I'm glad that you're laughing at it. I'm glad you can see me laughing. <laughs> oh, okay, good, good. And I'll tell you a, another thing about BNI. I just just yesterday, <clears throat> I made a uh, a poster for the film that's going to be hanging in the lobby, a sign. And who did I choose? Somebody from BNI from the Silver Spring branch. So there you go, BNI at work. Nice a referral there. Yes, absolutely. Fantastic. So um, I'm going to have Stephanie post some of your uh, links into the chat bar over there, like. Um, maybe your, your web address, which is jamesbonato.com. She can put that over there and, um, put your new Twitter account, which is twitter.com slash James Bonato. <laughs> and, um, tell us a little bit more about how people could get a hold of you. Cause I, I like to kind of end these, um, these broadcasts with a little information about how people can contact you. What's the best way to, for people, people to get in touch? Well, it's going to be a two-way street. The first one is just to email me, james at jamesbonatovideo.com. Mm -hmm. Say, hey, I'm interested in seeing the film. And then in a few days, I think I was going to wait till February 1, I'm going to send out a mass evite mm -hmm. to everybody I know, uh, inviting them to the film. And it, it is invite only only because there's only so many seats in the theater, and i got to figure out which theater to get. Um, yeah. So it's a two-way street. I will be emailing everybody I know their email address is on. But if you if I'm if I, if I don't have you on my list, please uh, email me. Okay. If anybody before we um, close the show, if anybody has any questions, you can type a little slash uh, capital Q in there and then ask a question like this. <clears throat> well, I'll, ac I'll I'll accept a question from anybody except from people from Canada. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we know who that is. <laughs> Poor Daphne. Or if, if anybody would like to ask a question online, we could unlock the seat as well for a brief moment. <laughs> any takers for any questions for James? Uh, I'd like to briefly introduce um, or kind of close the show with a little preview into who we're going to be interviewing next week. This BNI Blast on Blab. Uh, we do this every week, and we feature other BNI members from around the country. Um, we're featuring somebody, another person locally from our network, our <laughs> chapter, and that is going to be. Um, I think you know the guy. He has to do something with photography. Garrett Strang. Yes. <laughs> All right. So he's going to be another uh, social media guru who's never, you know, used Twitter before. And he's going to be coming online. We'll be we're going to be creating a Twitter account for him just for the uh, just so he can get online. That's well, the that that benefit. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm glad that you told me Garrett Strang is is on. So now I have a week to prepare a ridiculous questions for him. <laughs> Fantastic. I, I and I see. I need to uh, like really get a hold of my my technology around here during these shows. Everything is going off. <laughs> Cell phones, telephones. Um, 
Okay, I think um, so. That's our little intro for next time. Thank you very much, James, for participating and for giving us a little intro into what it, what it takes to uh, develop a documentary film. Thank you so much. Take care. Take care.